The musketeer Atos, armed now with a carte blanche which Milady had surrendered to him, realizes he must consult his friends out of earshot of cardinalist spies. So to be private, they seize an enemy bastion. Only bad priest, pity heretic. Adam is right. I'll warn him. Get yourself shot down, man! and I are breakfasting in its bastion. Nothing is more disagreeable than being disturbed at breakfast. Will you come back when we finish. <laughs> Good. What a place to eat. We can talk on her. The cardinal has any spies here. Besides, I waited we could last an hour. Too fast. Protestants here are coming, sir. That'll make an excellent impression. Sires will take us for madmen or heroes. Two classes of fools that very much resemble each other. Here, Carimo, use that as our standard. Raise it on high where they all see it. Now, gentlemen, to business. Our friend, D'Artagnan, is in some peril. May as well blow my brains out. Oh, the best folly. My dear. Why? The only one for which there is no remedy. Well, come, my enemies. My man of moon. Huh? Milady. Ow. The Count de Vard. Oh, yes, and the cardinal whose revenge I defeated. There's only four. And what a woman and one a priest. The moment my lady reaches England, she'll write to the cardinal of the cursed musketeer named Athos. Has stolen her safe conduct. And she'll name you an Arabi for good measure. Mm. <laughs> well, at that rate, we'll end up in the Bastille before Daniel. My point for something. Master, they reform their ranks. They mean to attack us again. How unwise of them. Raise up these gentlemen, where they may be seen. We said to build that fire. So, gentlemen, in our own interests, we must stop my lady. But how? To winter. Well, what could he do? Thank you, my dear. Besides, he's our relative. He's also my friend, remember? I spared his life. Ah. That yeah, makes sense. Find some means to warn him. There's no doubt of it. De Winter's a man of honor. Once he knows about my lady's villainy, he'd be merciless. Can we get a message through to him? Before my lady reaches England. I'm going to take the post road to Calais. Reason to send a musketeer on such a journey now. And a lackey. Bullshit. He knows the way. Then Planchet can go. Agreed, gentlemen? Agreed. 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 I'll write the letter. You write like a farmer, D'Artagnan. What? Such a letter needs a special talent. Arabic. <laughs> exactly. It's his vocation. Oh, it'll go in your name, D'Artagnan. Oh. But the composition shall be perfection itself. They're bringing up half a regiment. Hey, so they are. I think we should decamp. Decamp? But I don't understand it. What about all this food? They've got anything. Our standard. God's blood. They can't have that. an hour. It was heroic. Atos, Portos, Aramis. Always my three brave fellows. 
Take this napkin, Treville. Have three golden fleur-de-lis embroidered on it, and I will give it to your company. But, Monseigneur, Monsieur d'Artagnan was the fourth. You should have him, Treville. It is only right that four such gallant friends should serve in the same company. Captain! You'll be overjoyed, Your Honor. I'm sure they will. And yet I wonder, out alone there, what were they conspiring? Magnificent villains. Watch for her arrival, for she has great and terrible projects. If you require to know positively what my lady is capable of, read her past history on her left shoulder. Lordship is very kind, but there is something else. Big, what my is it? My master bade me say to you, His Grace of Buckingham, they wish to assassinate him. Do they so? Well, this shall be my care. When you return, Tell Monsieur d'Artagnan he has my heartfelt thanks. Tell him, be easy. Meantime, Milady journeyed slowly to England. It was nine days before she reached Portsmouth. Yes. Who are you, sir? Lieutenant Felton of the English Navy. I have orders to escort you, madam. Indeed. Well, we are at war with France. All travelers arriving from enemy territory undergo interrogation. But I'm English. The measure is general, madam. We will seek in vain to evade it. Very well. Pray, command me. I have a carriage waiting, my lady. Madam, you will kill yourself in jumping.
mother-in-law. What dreadful place is this? It is a castle, madam, part of the Portsmouth defence. And I have been lately made its governor. I congratulate you. But why have I been brought here in this violent manner? I'll be brief, madam. I know your reasons for coming to England. Well, I came to visit you. If faith, your tenderness is excessive. But you came chiefly to compass the death of his grace of Buckingham. What? Strange. So, so long I thought you virtuous. Spy. Uh -huh. Bigamist. Would-be assassin. Branded criminal. <coughs> I'm sending you to our southern colonies. In a few months, the tropic sun will have burnt out that fatal beauty and sucked dry your evil mind. John Felton. Come in, John. Close the door. Now, look at this woman. She's young and beautiful. Well, she is a fiend. For the next 15 days, she will stay here in your custody. In order to obtain her freedom, she will most certainly try to seduce you. <laughs> Swear to me on your Puritan faith that you will keep her safely for the chastisement that she has merited. My lord, everything shall be done as you desire. I swear it. And now, madam, endeavor to make your peace with God, for you have been condemned by men. Senators from England? No, Your Honor. You asked me to report on the escape of the woman Constance Bonacia. Well. Well, it seems our guards were bribed. We know not by whom. Though we may guess. Where is she now? We found a letter. She is being sheltered by the Carmelites of the convent of Betune. Let us stay there. I have more urgent affairs. I am gravely concerned for Milady de Winter. Did she reach England? I am powerless without good communications. Has she betrayed me? Is she dead? Spurs! Prisoners escape me. Messengers fail me. I need men of valor. France's best plot silently against me. Whisper in corners, pass secret letters. Have we taken any prisoners today? One, I believe. Let him be hanged at dawn. Inform his majesty, executions divert him. I shall ride. In England, the unshorn lamb kept watch over the tigress. Felton, who abhorred both flesh and devil, was soon to be the victim of both. His prisoner had seen the Puritan fervor which consumed him and found means to use it. God who knows my pain. Madam. Did not hear you enter. Your heart was with God. I did not know you were of my faith. My faith is all that's left to me. The last and the best consolation of a Christian soul. A Christian soul? A soul to be saved. Tell me, in heaven's name, in what manner have you sinned? <gasps> Baby, sir! Thou art my sister in God. Only confess that my prayers may be joined with thine. Baby, sir! But while Milady was persuading Felton, she was his sister in God. Richelieu awaited news from her of Buckingham's death. No news came. Madame de Chevreuse wrote secretly to Aramis to say that Constance Bonacieux was alive and safe in the convent of Béthune. D'Artagnan's cup was full. The letter had come as he was celebrating becoming a musketeer. D'Artagnan! A musketeer! A musketeer! And his little lady safe. Mm. Mm. Officer! You speak. 
Rascal. Why? Seems gentlemen of the musketeers set sentinels for them, sir. No eminence? Or do musketeers regard themselves as superior officers? Monseigneur, musketeers, when they are off duty, drink and play, and are very superior officers indeed. But are they lackeys? Lackeys with orders to spy on passers-by are not lackeys, sir, but sentinels. Without them, you would have passed unnoticed. And we would have lost this opportunity to pay you our respect and thanks for uniting us with D'Artagnan. D'Artagnan, you wanted this chance. No matter, gentlemen. I do not like private soldiers to give themselves airs because they serve in a privileged corps. Discipline is for all. Discipline, Monseigneur, we do not, I think, forget. Being off duty, we thought we'd spend our time as we pleased and celebrate our friend's promotion. Your Eminence perceives, in case of alarm, we come out armed. Let your Eminence be persuaded. We would have met you, had we known. Do you know what you look like? Always together, always armed, and guarded by lackeys? Four conspirators. If we conspire, Monseigneur, it is, as you saw the other day, only against the men of La Rochelle. Ah, you politicians. If I could read your brains as quickly as you read that letter, which you heed the instant you saw me. You are serious, my lord? This becomes a regular examination. Will your eminence deign to explain yourself so that we know exactly how we stand? An examination? Monsieur Atos, you would not be the first to answer to me. We are always ready to answer, Your Eminence. What letter was that which you were reading, Monsieur Aramis? A letter from a woman, my lord. Ah, I see. Then we must be discreet. But such a letter may be shown to a confessor. And you know, I have taken orders. This woman is not one of your intimates, your enemies. <laughs> oh, come, come. <laughs> you are brave young men, proud in the sunlight, faithful in the darkness. There is no harm in watching over yourselves, so long as you watch over others as well. Finish your bottles, your game, and your letter. Adieu, gentlemen. That Grima was late in warning. Would you have sent him the letter, Adamy? I? <laughs> I decided, if he insisted, to present it to him with one hand and run him through with the other. I thought so. Oh, no, at us. We were wrong. Whose is this air that we breathe? Who's this ocean? Who's this land beneath our feet? Whose is that letter from your mistress? Do all these things belong to the cardinal? God's blood! This man fancies the whole world belongs to him! The Tanyon. You were standing stupefied, as if the gigantic Medusa that had turned you into stone and the gates of the Bastille were open before you. Is it to conspire, to be in love? Oh, let's forget it. No, no, don't vanish. Constance is safe. Yes. It's out of me. Burn it. Burn it twice. Oh, who knows? The Cardinal may have a secret for interrogating ashes. Harvey! Grimo, for the punishment of having spoken without permission, you must swallow this letter. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, you may have a glass of wine as a reward. <laughs> well, chew it well, chew it well. Now, unless the Cardinal has the ingenious idea of splitting Grimo down the middle, <laughs> we may all rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Down with the cardinal. Down with the cardinal! <laughs> Decidedly, those four men must enter my service. Brother, I meant not to yield to your pleasure, but... Oh, I'm a weak creature after all. And in this my trial, I long for the comfort you could give me. Speak, speak. Look at me, John Felton. Am I not beautiful? This face. This body. The cross I've borne since womanhood. But I gave my favor to no man. Yet one there was. Richer. More powerful and more nobly born than any in the land. His name? This, this man had me abducted. In his palace, he held me captive, and he had his will of me. Oh, villain! Villain! Then he offered me my freedom. Beware, I cried. My freedom is your dishonor. Oh, Felton. Dearest John. In the morning, he returned. He... He was not alone. Try, if you can, to prove you are neither guilty nor mad. A young girl's martyrdom. The Fleur de Lys. Uh, therein lay the infamy. I could have proved that no tribunal in England had branded me, but the brand of France, by that was I branded indeed. Pardon. Oh, pardon. Thus was John Felton made her slave. He swore to bring her out of captivity. Together they would escape to France. And when at last Milady named her persecutor, 